Hey, Darren here, bestautodetailingtips.com. What we have here is a Rolls-Royce Ghost. This is a $315,000 car. I'm gonna do some leather cleaning. Now, it's a brand new car. The leather's, uh, as you can tell, not dirty. That's not the main point of this. The main point of this is that society is stuck in the past when it comes to leathers. They think that the leathers, for example, used in this car are oh so delicate and that um, you have to use specialized cleaners and conditioners and so forth. But the reality is, is while this is a much better leather than you're gonna find in most cars, the cleaning methods remain the same because modern day leathers are coated. Virtually every modern day leather is coated with a clear coating similar to like the clear coat on your car. The reason they do that is for protection same with leather so it's a, a water-based clear coating and the point is is that the same uh, leather cleaning techniques that can be used in the other cars can be used in these cars as well um, of course uh, common sense is always welcomed uh, if you lack common sense well go find it somewhere uh, that I probably can't help you with because you either have it or you either don't so if you got it apply some common sense which means you pick your tools accordingly now what I use is a synthetic uh, scrub pad it's a non-abrasive completely synthetic it's not going to damage or hurt any material like this now with that said would I use this on the clear plastic cover that covers the gauges no I wouldn't because common sense would dictate that that would leave some abrasive marks to it I've got my toothbrush for in between the seams and I've got my stiff nylon brush but it's, a, it's the winning combination of stiffness. It's not too stiff where it would actually cause some damage and it's not um, so soft that it's going to be ineffective in the cleaning process because every leather is not created equal. So for example, this leather has a combination of perforated leather and it's also got a textured leather here. Now this texture is what I would call a medium grade texture. Uh, some of the cars like the Maseratis for example is a good uh, case have a real deep heavy texture to it this is medium uh, a lot of cars have what's called a very smooth texture where there's virtually no texture to the leather whatsoever it's completely smooth the point is is the heavier the texture the more valleys and crevices that are there in which dirt can accumulate and hide and if you don't have the right tools and the right cleaners you will be uh, disappointed and you will just not be able to clean it very effectively so once again I realize it's a brand new car I take care of this car every week it gets detailed um, but leather this light is going to show the dirt literally within a week so if you do not clean this weekly it's not going to stay in pristine showroom condition which is what this owner requires which is what I always uh, shoot for. Point is, is I have two cleaners. One's an all-purpose cleaner. One of my favorites, it's put up by McGuire's. 95% of the time, this will be uh, sufficient for any of your leather cleaning. Now, whether you simply, uh, like on this case, because the leather is so clean to begin with, it could be as simple as shooting the rag and I use a microfiber rag because I don't like lint. Wow. So yeah. I. Can Dee use some of your cleaning supplies? She's gonna wash my cars for me now. Yeah, help herself. <laughs> oh no, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Little sidebar: We got the comedian next door who thinks he's uh, funny, but not really. Anyhow, so uh, point is, is on something like this, it can be as simple as just. Uh, use a microfiber cloth dampen with your cleaning solution and giving it an aggressive wipe down of course the more something's touched the dirtier it's going to get so that the seating surfaces uh, this could be a woman this could be a man uh, they wear they tend to wear different clothing sometimes women wear short little skirts and then their bare legs that have a lotion on them will begin to mucky up and dirty up this area of the seat men if they wear long sleeves uh, they're not going to get much wear on here much dirt 
women will tend to wear the short sleeveless type of dresses once again they got lotion all over their body it's going to accumulate in these areas so those are the areas that you're going to have to uh, pay special attention to now based on how dirty it is will determine your technique so like I said something like this it can be as simple as my all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth dampen and aggressive rubbing it now if you want to step it up like is this leather, if it ever gets dirtier, you can spray the seat itself, use the stiff brush, and mop it up. So the point is, is my techniques and my cleaners that I recommend are safe and suitable. Not only are they safe, but they're actually gonna produce results. See, there's a difference. Virtually any off-the-shelf leather cleaner is going to be dumbed down so far that it's going to prove to be ineffective on any actual dirt. Now, if you had a seat like this and you took, let's say, like Lexol uh, with its whole pH balanced and that whole uh, can of worms, um, it may feel good up here and make sense because you feel like, oh, my leather's so delicate, I really need to be careful with it. But the reality is, is if it actually gets dirty and you got to clean it, it's going to be very frustrating because it's just not going to be effective. Now, of course, you could use a still or a, um, a stiff brush with that Lexol cleaner and you'll have uh, be able to produce a little bit better results. But as far as truly getting clean or leather clean as in showroom, like perfect clean, it's going to require the right product the right tools and the right technique and the technique really can be simple it's going to be a case by case this has perforations in it I'm never going to saturate it so much that it's going to soak down into the perforations so once again that's that point about common sense uh, we don't want to saturate it to the point where it's literally going to drip down below the perforations but between this scrub pad I can either spray the scrub pad and spot clean it or I can spray the material first use the scrub pad use the stiff brush now this stiff brush is completely safe for this leather the cleaner is completely safe for this leather even my most aggressive cleaner that I could use which is this stuff for that kind of leather that hasn't been touched in like eight years and the leather used to be a light tan and now it's a dark grungy brown and you can almost like carve your name into the dirt because it's that thick okay unless you really step it up nothing's going to clean that and you'll just be continually disappointed so whether we're working on your thirty thousand dollar lexus your fifty thousand dollar escalade with leather in it actually escalades now are more like 80 to 100,000 it's crazy or your 300 plus thousand dollar Rolls Royce uh, these mes methods are safe society is stuck in the past we do not realize the improved methods that they have employed in manufacturing leather um, and if you want these kinds of results you're going to have to change your thinking and you're going to have to apply the right product the right tools the right technique to what I call the winning combination for superior results. Okay, that's our lesson today. A few added points is you'll notice I always wear gloves. Uh, I never want my nails to hang up on something uh, because generally I'm working pretty, I'm working with purpose. Uh, I've got um, urgency. So in working with urgency, I don't want to have to think about where my nails are touching so I always wear gloves, especially on a car like this. Secondly, you want to pre-vacuum and you want to force these seams open because dirt and debris will accumulate in there. Now, if you don't vacuum it up first and you spray your uh, solution onto it, what's going to happen? It's going to mix with that dirt and debris and possibly create kind of a soupy worse mess for you to clean up. So pre-vacuum. Um, on my tip of my vacuum cleaner, I like to sand it and make sure there's no burrs or edges uh, because once again as I'm vacuuming, just like my fingernails, I don't want to catch the material and leave some permanent damage. That would not be good. Anyhow, 
other than that, um, I think you've learned something, hopefully you have, and we will see you on the other side.